The present pattern of Hajj was established by Prophet Muhammad, who made reforms to the pre-Islamic pilgrimage of the pagan Arabs. Mecca was conquered by the Muslims in 630 CE and the building was consecrated to Allah. In 632 CE, shortly before his death, the Prophet performed his only and last pilgrimage with a large number of followers and taught them the riots of Hajj and the manners of performing them. In the plain of Arafah, he delivered a famous speech known as the Farewell Sermon to those who were present there. From then, Hajj became one of the five pillars of Islam. The Prophet's pilgrimage became a precedent to be followed by all Muslims all over the world. Taking part in the pilgrimage at least once in one's lifetime is a major obligation for all able-bodied Muslims of financial means. Between 2 to 3 million people participate in the six-day ritual every year. Hajj, as we know today, occurs in the 12th month of the Islamic lunar calendar, called Zul Hijjah, between the 8th and the 13th days of the month. The riots of Hajj begin with the state of Ihram, a pilgrim's sacred state, when crossing the outer boundaries of Mecca, called Miqat. On the 8th of Zul Hijjah, pilgrims enter Ihram, which entails wearing plain garments, two unstitched cloths for men or loose-fitting clothing for women, as well as following certain rules such as not giving in to anger or engaging in sexual activity. The idea behind dressing simply is to mask any difference in wealth and status. The riots of Hajj are believed to retrace events from the lives of prominent prophets such as Ibrahim and Ismail. The tabliya is a prayer invoked by pilgrims as a conviction that they intend to perform Hajj only for the glory of Allah. It is repeatedly invoked during Hajj. Upon putting on the ihram, so the pilgrims can purify and rid themselves of worldly concern. Tawaf al Qudum Tawaf is the circumambulation of the Kaaba seven times in anti clockwise direction. Circling the Kaaba represents the idea of oneness. The motion is taken from the order of the universe. The planets rotate around the sun, the electrons around the nucleus, and the moth around the flame. Rotating around such a center means allegiance with love. Each circumambulation gets to completion when a person returns back to Hajj Aswad. If possible, a person should approach to touch or kiss the Hajj Aswad. If not, he can just point towards it with his right hand. Sai. At the time of the Prophet, Makkah was flourishing. The Quraysh were the custodians of the Kaaba. But when Ibrahim brought his wife and son there, Makkah was an empty desert. No one had settled there, nor was there any water. Ibrahim was commanded by Allah to leave his family in such conditions, which went on to be one of the tests along with many more to come. He placed them with some dates and water before setting out on his path. When the water had been all used up, Hajra, his wife, left their child Ismail to set out in search of water. She found that the mountain of Asafa was the nearest to her on that land. Then she descended from Asafa and ran between Safa and Marwa seven times in search of help. Finally, when she reached back to her son, she observed that Ismail was digging through the earth with his heel. As she scooped up the water, it continued to flow, to which she said, Zamzam, which meant stop, stop, as she was worried the water would run out. The rites of Sai commemorates the actions of Hajra. The example set by Hajra, despite being a slave girl, became a model of the pilgrimage followed till date, emulated by the Prophet along with his Ummah. Mina Ste. The pilgrims then set out en masse from Mecca to the sprawling tent city of Mina, whether by foot, along the pilgrim's path, or by buses and cars. 
You will spend the day in Mina only setting out next morning at dawn. Most of the time in Mina is spent in prayer and remembering Allah. Arafa The day of Arafa is considered one of the most important days not just of Hajj but of the Islamic calendar. After making the 14.4 km journey from Mina, pilgrims spend the day here in reverent prayer. Pilgrims undertake a sojourn in this holy site before moving on to an open plain near Mecca. It is approximated that the first prayer offered by Adam was near Mount Arafah. The spiritual significance of the geographic site stretches on to the moment when the prophet delivered his last khutbah on the 9th of Zulhijjah which is the last month of the Islamic year the incident commenced 10 years after hijra migration from makka to medina in the urana valley of arafa this farewell address got the status of a universal manifesto for the whole of mankind he explained that the period of ignorance had come to an end and so had its practices its rivalries and its conflicts based on power and greed henceforth all muslims were united by faith fraternity and love which were to transform them into witnesses of islam's message they must under no circumstances accept being either oppressors or oppressed apparently by the conclusion of the farewell sermon It is also revealed that the completion of Islam as a complete religion as well as a complete code of life. According to one narration, this ritual is said to commemorate the actions of Ibrahim while he was en route to sacrifice his son Ismail to fulfill the instructions of God. On his way to his son he was confronted 3 times by the devil who attempted to dissuade him and each time Ibrahim responded by pelting him with stones Pilgrims start the day in Muzdalifah and begin heading back to Mina before dawn once in Mina they perform the first rami throwing seven pebbles at the largest of the three columns known as Jawara This act is a symbolic stoning of the devil based on historical tradition. Another symbolism of Muzdalifah involves sleeping in the open rocky plains as a metaphor for the life of the grave. This again returns to the broader theme of rituals of Hajj, representing the stages in afterlife and reminding us of the inevitable journey back to Allah. After casting stones, pilgrims must perform the sacrifice. Qurbani Ibrahim in his repeated dreams was commanded to sacrifice his son Ismail. He loved his son dearly, yet this was no obstruction to honoring his duty that was instructed to him by Allah and thus proving his full submission to Allah. Ibrahim took his son to the top of Mount Arafah in his hands a knife and a rope. Upon arrival, he mentioned the dream to his son Ismail. He accepted what was commanded of him. Ismail asked that his father should blindfold himself in order to avoid witnessing the suffering of his son. Ismail was aware of his father's love towards him and knew that this would be difficult to witness. As Ibrahim began to carry the sacrifice, Allah replaced Ismail with a ram and Ismail was unharmed. The legacy of Ibrahim speaks of the fact that the very idea of human sacrifice is unacceptable to true religion and Allah has never given it sanction. Barbaric sacrificial practices even after Ibrahim owing to paganism in the dark ages was so widespread that the intervention of Islam became a necessity. Teachings of the Prophet define that true faith does not mean discarding one's moral values or ethics in favor of a mindless commitment to arbitrary instructions. 
At the basis of Islamic theology is the notion that Allah is the most merciful and that He would never ordain such suffering or harm on any human being. Moving on to Tawaf al-Ifada, at this point, pilgrims trim or shave their hair and remove their ihram clothes. Many will then proceed to Mecca to perform Tawaf, first circling the Kaaba seven times then walking seven times between the hills of Safa and Marwa. As soon as one has completed Tawaf al-Ifada, the state of Ihram has completely ended and all restrictions are lifted, which finally leads to the farewell Tawaf. During the night spent in Muzdalifa, pilgrims gather 70 stones to pelt the three pillars representing the devil on the 10th of Zulhijjah, that is the day of Hajj. Muslims perform the same ritual for the next three days before concluding the circumambulation of the Kaaba. Through the motions and riots of Hajj, the believer takes a step back from the specific moment in time and appreciates the larger tradition that binds them to the billions of people throughout history. While it would be naive to think that all of mankind could move in a unified direction with a unified purpose, it would be hampering to not work precisely towards that lofty goal. In just a few days, the rituals of Hajj impress upon millions of pilgrims in attendance of a methodology for interacting with everything from the unseen divine to the visibly neglected.